somebody said yeah. Heavenly Father we do thank you for our Bible study We thank you because you brought us here For a good purpose to learn I will pray that every distraction you take away from our hearts In Jesus name yeah. That attitude and spirit of buying and selling One in the house of God Hearts wandering here and there Not concentrating Lord we pray Take that away from us in Jesus name yeah. Shine the light forth into every heart and speak your truth to everyone that we will understand the word, believe the word, accept the word, obey the word, and this word will do good in every life in Jesus' name. Take unbelief away from every heart. Take careless, frivolous attitude away from every life. And the heart that comes to the word of God without seriousness and without looking at the things for eternal value, take all that away from us in Jesus' name. Amen. Help us, Lord, to have the mind of Christ and to have the mind of those Thessalonian believers and Berean believers who searched the word to find out that these things were so and to live in the power, in the light, in the knowledge, in the truth of the word of God in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray that Satan will not take your word away from any heart. But Lord, this word will do good in every heart. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We're studying from John chapter 8 and I'm reading from verse 31. For the privilege of those who are just here for their benefit, I want to tell you that we're studying from the gospel according to St. John. And we're coming from chapter 1. We're now in chapter 8. In chapter 8, let me back up to verse 30. Then it says, as he speak these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. The primary audience of Jesus Christ the immediate audience of Jesus Christ, the present audience of Jesus Christ, in the passage we're reading, they're referred to as the Jews. The Jews were the children of Israel. But as you look at the gospel according to St. John, some of them believed, and many, many of them did not believe. Look at that verse again. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. Only those Jews which believed on him. He told them, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And now we're talking about the Jews to start with. The Jews were given a great privilege. Actually, they had great advantage beyond all other people. When you think about the nation of Israel, and you think about all the other nations around them or beyond them, they had great privilege, great opportunity, and great advantage. In fact, we're told in Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3, reading from verse 1. Here Paul, the apostle writing to the Roman believers, wanted to know about the Jews. What do you think about the Jews? The advantage, their privilege, and the opportunity. It tells us in Romans chapter 3, verse 1, what advantage then has the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? The word circumcision there, standing for the Jews. It says, much every way. It says whatever angle you are looking at it, the Jews had great advantage. It says much in every way, chiefly, primarily, and uh, with priority and preeminently because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. Unto them. You look at Genesis all through to Malachi, it came from those uh, Jewish uh, prophets that God had raised up and he said, what a great privilege they had. And when Jesus Christ came, he began to announce the a gospel of the grace of God. The apostles came, they began to announce the gospel of the grace of God. You know what they said? They said, the Jews forced. They went to the Jews because they already had understanding of the Old Testament. And now they went to the Jews. Look at uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 16. It says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Listen to this. To the Jew first 
and also to the Greeks. That means uh, even when the gospel came, gospel of grace, and the dispensation of grace in the early church, in those early years, all the apostles went to the Jew falls, and they went to the Jews, they said, this is the prophet, and this is the Christ, and this is the Savior, this is the Messiah, that the Lord himself said he was going to send, he has now sent him, and we come to you for so that you will believe and then you'll be the mouthpiece of the Lord to talk to the rest of the world to the Gentiles Acts of the Apostles chapter 13 I'm reading from verse 16 Acts chapter 13 I'm reading from verse 46 rather verse 46 Acts chapter 13 verse 46 then Paul and Barnabas uh, talking to the Jews what bold and said it was necessary that the word of God shall force have been spoken in unto you. Look at that. All the apostles, they went out, they started in Jerusalem, who are there? Jews. They went to Judea, who are there? Jews. They went to Samaritans, and the Samaritans, they were half Jews and half Gentile. And it says, it was all right. It was befitting. It was according to the word of the Lord that the word, the gospel, what of salvation? What of eternal life? The word that will point the way to heaven for us shall have been spoken to you first. And then, but it says, See ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life. Lo, we turn to the Gentiles. God wanted all of them to be saved, but were not saved. He wanted them to have the great privilege of having the word of God, the toys with it. They gambled with their chance. They threw the chance away. And Paul, the apostle, said, Well, I'm going to waste the whole of life with you. We're going, not going to waste all the dispensation of grace and the period of preaching the gospel with you. Since you have rejected it, we're going to the Gentiles. Look at verse 47. For so, as the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for the salvation unto the ends of the earth. You see, they missed the opportunity. They lost the advantage. And the great things God wanted to do for them, they couldn't get those things. The same thing happened at the time of Jesus Christ, because he now came to them, and all those Jews were there. He was in Jerusalem. He was in Capernaum. He was in all those places where the Jews were. They came. It's not that they didn't come. They heard. It's not that they didn't hear. And they listened. It's not that they were not paying attention, but they rejected. They abused their opportunity. They misused their opportunities. Some believed, but many of them remained in unbelief. And it's the same today. And we in this, our church, Deeper Life Bible Church, we're like those Jews. We have the word of God. And it's taught from cover to cover. Every Monday we're here. Our leaders are there on Tuesday. Our members are there on Thursday for revival. And they were there on Saturday for the workers. And Sunday we're there. And we open the pages of scripture. And the light is shining every time. And we go thoroughly through all the things that will give eternal life to everyone that hears. Our children are hearing. Our youths are hearing. Our women are hearing. Our men are hearing. But then, what are we doing with the word? Are we so familiar with the word, like the Jewish people, that we abuse our opportunity and we misuse our privilege and we misuse our advantage? They were full of unbelief. Look at Mark chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 6. Mark chapter 6. And we're reading from verse 6. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Jesus Christ looked at them and said, you don't know your time. You don't know your opportunity. And you don't know the advantage that you have. And he looked at them, those Jewish people, and he marveled at their unbelief. We're looking at Romans chapter 11, and I'm reading from verse 20, the unbelief of the Jews surprised him, amazed him, and it made him to wonder, how could people be like this, that the Lord is giving them such a great privilege, a place reserved for them in heaven, and yet they close their eyes, they close their minds, they will not listen, they will not accept, because they have other agendas in their mind. Romans chapter 11 verse 20, it says, well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. Because of unbelief, they were broken off. Jewish people, 
the sons and the daughters of Abraham, and the people that should have got eternal life first. It says they were broken off and they were sent away, and they missed everlasting life, and they lost everlasting life, and they missed heaven because of their unbelief. I pray it will not happen to you. Amen. Did you say amen to that? Amen. We're looking at Hebrews. Look at Hebrews chapter, chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3. And we're still reading about these people. You know, when we say Hebrews, actually the Hebrews are Jewish, the Jewish people. And this was written peculiarly to those people that had believed among the Hebrews. So that uh, what happened to their forefathers and what happened to their grandparents, fathers and mothers will not happen unto them. And it tells us in Hebrews chapter 3, reading here from verse 13. In Hebrews chapter 3, let me back up to verse 12. It says in verse 12, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. It says, Take heed. It happened to all the people. They had the privilege of hearing about salvation, they lost it. They had the privilege of hearing about holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. They missed their opportunity. And he's saying, Brethren, those of us who are born again, those of us who are children of God, and those of us who are learning the word of God, it says, Take heed. It says, Take heed, brethren. Those are people who are saved. Take it, brethren. Those are people, the word of God had come to them. Take it, brethren. He was talking to the people that profess they want their way to heaven. And he said, yes, you must take it because there's an evil heart of unbelief. Don't let that jump on you. There's an evil heart of unbelief. Don't let that come into you. There's an evil heart of unbelief. Don't let that occupy your mind and occupy your head and occupy your heart that even though the opportunity is there, you miss the opportunity. It says in departing from the living God, but exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Lest you cajole yourself, deceive yourself, delude yourself. Let's you tell yourself some lies saying, of course, I'm saved, I'm forever saved, we're children of Abraham, and if anybody got to heaven, we are going to get to heaven. How can we miss heaven? Abraham is there, Isaac is there, Jacob is there, I must be there. He says, take heed and don't deceive yourself because of the deceitfulness of sin. Look at verse 14, it says, for we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. I pray you'll hold on to the end. Look at um, Hebrews chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 2. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 2. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word was preached unto them and is being preached unto us. It says but we're hearing the word. It says but we know the gospel. It says but we're people that are referred to as deep alive Bible church but it says but we're people that have the word of God explained every time, interpreted every time, applied every time to every area of our lives it says but, look at this the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it, they heard it in the head they heard it of their ears. But then because they were not paying attention, it's like already I'm saved, already I'm born again, already I'm going to heaven. Whatever happens, I know that heaven is my home. Whatever they are preaching, I just came to the Bible said because I know I must come. If I didn't come, they will say, why didn't you come? And if I didn't come, I'll not be able to do my thing that I normally do. It says take heed so that the word of God that is being preached will not go in one ear and then come out the other ear. Look at that uh, chapter verse 6 now. I'm looking at uh, Hebrews chapter 4 and I'm looking at verse 6. It says, seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein. It's talking about entering to heaven and they to whom it was first preached entered not because God didn't want them to enter. Didn't God want them to enter? Of course he wanted them to enter. It says because of, tell me out loud, 
because of unbelief because of unbelief it's not just enough to just sit down there i'm hearing the word it says they couldn't enter because of unbelief look at verse 11 let us labor therefore to enter into that rest lest any man fall after the same manner after the same example of unbelief the unbelief of many did not hinder jesus did not hinder christ from saying everything he wanted to say he still preached his message believe or not believe he still had his ministry whether they believed or not and he still carried out his mission and those who were saved will, will be saved those who will be saved will be saved and the people that want to get to heaven that say i know how i came i know why i came i want to get to heaven i didn't come here to just listen i didn't come here to just uh, be part of the crowd i didn't just come here to be a part of numbers statistics i came so that the thing will affect my heart affect my life affect my family affect my children affect everybody and we get to heaven i pray you'll be of that number yeah. the mission of jesus christ was still done he still finished his work and he said on the cross it is finished the people that didn't believe they were the losers i pray you'll not be a loser yeah. jesus christ sees us now multitudes of people that believe they believed at that time some of them and many of the people believe now and the lord still continues to prepare people for heaven and thank god i'm going there i say thank god i'm going there whoever accepts whoever rejects i know i'm going to accept and i'm going i know i'm going to obey and I'm, i know i'm going to get there we'll get there in jesus name we'll come back to john chapter 8 john chapter 8 tonight we're looking at true discipleship and uh, freedom through christ uh, true discipleship and freedom through Christ. We're looking at, a Roman, at a John chapter 8, and I'm reading now from verse 31. John chapter 8, and I'm reading from verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. He's telling us, it's not a one-time belief. I believe. And then we we'll go back to the world. I believe. And then we we'll go back to darkness. I believe. And then we we'll go back to our sin. It says, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And it says in verse 32, and ye shall know the truth. That means ye shall know the truth. You'll keep on learning. You'll keep on hearing. And you'll keep on assimilating. You'll keep on receiving the word of truth. It says, ye shall know the truth. And the more you know the truth, it says, the truth shall make you free. Look at verse 36. If the Son therefore shall make you free, what will happen? Ye shall be free indeed. That means you'll be totally free. You'll be completely free. You'll be permanently free. And you'll be, you'll be free through and through, inwardly and outwardly, externally, and in your soul, in your spirit, in your mind. It says you'll be free. Every yoke will be broken. All the fetters will be taken away. Because the Son now comes into your life. He comes as Savior, sets you free. Comes as Son fire. He sets you free. He comes at the final sacrifice. He sets you free. He comes as a substitute. He sets you free. He comes as a shepherd. He sets you free. And he comes at the all in all in your life. And any yoke and anything that binds you, he breaks everything you know, and you're free. And thank God today the word that sets free is coming to you. Yeah. Every yoke will be broken. Every oppression will be taken away. And everything that ties you down there, that you couldn't move forward, that you're not free tonight, freedom has come. You'll be free in Jesus' name. Now we're dividing the message to three parts. Number one, true freedom, discipleship, and steadfastness with the Son. True freedom, discipleship, and steadfastness with the Son. But we're going to discover as we read other parts. Point number two, the falsehood and delusion. Delusion is self-deception. Those who tell themselves lies, and they tell the lies over and over to themselves until they actually believe it, until they believe it, and they are acting that lie out. And it's self-deception. Uh, the falsehood and delusion of the servants of sin. The servants of sin. Point number three, the future and the damnation of the slaves of Satan. The future and the damnation of the slaves of Satan. We're coming back to number one. Tell me your number one. 
through freedom, discipleship, and steadfastness or the Son. I'm reading from uh, John chapter 8 again, verse 31. John chapter 8, verse 31. It tells us here, it says, Then said Jesus to those Jews who would believe on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. What Jesus said at that time is the same today. Because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus is not the one that will come back to you and say, Oh, I made a mistake in that thing I said the other time. That was uh, for those people. Now I'm changing my word. I'm telling you this. No. It's ever remaining constant. Because what he said before he's saying today, what he's saying today is saying tomorrow. And what he's saying tomorrow is saying till the end of time. And he's still telling us the same thing. You know? And he's telling us, those of us that believe in him, if you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Look at what the whole scripture is saying. It tells, it tells us of the people that believed in the Acts of the Apostles Acts chapter 2, reading from verse 42. Acts chapter 2, we're reading from verse 42. It says in verse 42, and they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. See, those were the people that had known the Lord, and they came to the Lord in salvation. They repented of their sins. They said bye-bye to the world, and bye-bye to darkness, and bye-bye to evil, and bye-bye to all the traditions of the past, and bye-bye to super Bye bye to all their candle burning. Bye bye to all their incense. Bye bye to all their animal sacrifices. Bye bye to idolatry. And then they came to the Lord and they believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. And the testimony of the scripture is like this. And they continued steadfastly, not just uh, continuing sluggishly, continuing half heartedly, continuing. I don't know whether I really want to be in this or not. One leg in the church and one leg outside. All of their hearts, their minds, and their totality came into the, into the Lord. And then it says, and they continued how? I said they continued how? And you will continue how? In your office, how do you continue? In your home, how do you continue? As you interact with other people that, you know, they, they are not sure of who Christ is. They are not sure of salvation. But you are sure of salvation. How do you continue? Steadfastly. And it says they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. I want you to look at Acts chapter 13. We're looking at verse 43. You'll find that this is always the same if you're a child of God. You're born again. You have come into the kingdom. It's one thing thing is to come. That's step one. The next step is to make sure that after you have come, I continue, I continue, I continue. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13, we're looking at verse 43. Now, when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. The grace of God has saved you. The grace of God has forgiven you. The grace of God has cleansed your life. The grace of God has turned you around. And the grace of God has removed darkness away from you. And light has come. And they persuaded them. They imposed on them. They prevailed on them. You must continue in the grace of God, in the word of God. We're looking at chapter 14. Acts chapter 14. I'm reading here from verse 22. Acts chapter 14, verse 22. It says in verse 22, confirm confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. Don't get back to unbelief. Continue in the faith. Don't get back into doubting. Continue in the faith. Don't uh, associate with the people who argue. Continue in the faith. Don't continue. Don't uh, go on in fellowship or friendship with the people that do not totally believe that will try to turn your mind. Forsake them. Abandon them. Come out of among them and continue in the faith. And that we must through much difficulty, tribulation, persecution, trial temptation enter into the kingdom of God. Thank God you will continue. I say thank God you will continue. 
there's an if there when Jesus spoke to those Jews said if you continue if you continue don't think well I'm saved I'm forever saved on one condition if you continue don't think I'm a child of God I'll always be a child of God on one condition if you continue and I want to ask you those of us who have been born again for a long time do you continue do you continue in your consciousness do you continue in your conscientiousness in following after the Lord do you continue in the tender heart that you had when you were born again do you continue in obedience to the word of God when you were born again do you continue in overcoming temptation do you continue in taking a firm stand and saying no this is the way I will walk therein I'm not going to walk in darkness anymore do you continue in an uncompromising stand that you know in those days after you became born again they said do this and do this a mother may be telling you that a wife may be telling you that a husband may be telling you you that a child might say daddy or mommy eh, about this you said no I, I came into this thing before you were born here is where I stand do you continue like that or now are we now wishy washing are we now doubting are we now bending are we now compromising you're going to miss heaven if you continue like that because it says you are only my disciples if you continue in my word and look at what the bible is saying over here we're looking at uh, first timothy chapter 2 first timothy chapter 2 and i'm reading from verse 15 first timothy chapter 2 and here we're looking at uh, verse 15 it says in uh, verse 15 notwithstanding she shall be saved in childbearing it's talking about a Christian woman who is pregnant, a Christian wife who is pregnant, and then she wants to deliver. And the Lord said, I can only give you assurance. There will be still safe delivery if you continue. Look at this. If they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. But uh, if it's like, you know, I'm, going, I'm expecting a child. I'm so happy now. We cannot be talking of holiness now. We're going to celebrate. We're going to have drum. We're going to have this and that. The thing to the time before the child the pregnancy came through prayer and now you're going to the world so that you can celebrate the answer to the prayer it says you know what you're going to have safe delivery if you continue in the faith and you continue in charity and you continue in holiness with sobriety not what worthiness we're looking at first uh, first timothy chapter 4 and i'm reading from verse 15 and verse 16 it says meditate upon on these things when you hear the word of God don't just toss us like we went to the Bible study that was very interesting and we studied this and we studied that and then we forget all about it if somebody asked us one hour after that what was the title what was the topic what was the passage what was the emphasis what were the points and uh, uh, actually you, it was interesting it was very in fact i'm telling you that you know i was happy to be at the bible study and not happiness what was there they have forgotten the second day they have forgotten if we learn and forget learn and forget when we get to the office when we ought to apply the word we're forgotten when we're in our homes we ought to apply the word we're forgotten when the thing that should affect our character affect our stand we're forgotten that's not right because it's like we didn't come. It's telling us that we meditate on that word. It's as we meditate, you ruminate. You turn it over your mind. You apply it to your heart. When I get to the office, that word, that's how I'm going to do it. That person that I've been trying to tell me to go the wrong way and this and that. Now I understand I must continue. I have the grace of God now. I'm going to have backbone and I'm going to stand. It is when we do that, we're going to benefit from the word. Look at that about 15 minutes meditate upon these things and it says give thyself wholly unto them that their profiting may appear unto all take each unto thyself and to the doctrine continue in them continue in them continue in them for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee somebody there will continue I will continue I said I will continue you continue in Jesus' name. It not, it's not just continue attending church. That's good. It's not just continue reading Bible. That's good. It's talking about you continue obeying the word. Your conscience remains tender. Your life remains purposeful. 
and your obedience remains visible that people will know like you were five years ago obeying the word of God that's the way you are now you concentrate on the word of God and you apply the word of God to every area of your life and say that's not right I put it right that's not right I put it right and your conscience remains tender your conscience remains soft and it is impressed by the word of God every time it tells us in a second Timothy chapter 3 I'm reading here from verse 12 second Timothy chapter 3 reading from verse 12 it says ye and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution what we call persecution is that not everybody will agree with you therefore they might frown at you but what's that you know you're very weak if uh, you know somebody frowning will make you to change your mind if uh, you know somebody can say okay I'm not your friend anymore that's the form of persecution and you'll be a, a person that has no principle at all if because of somebody said okay I don't like you anymore then you change your mind who are they what can, what can they do? The Lord that is giving you breath and is giving you life, is giving you eternal life, is giving you heaven, he says this is what you do and this man that can give you nothing, they mean nothing to your life and they offer nothing in your life and they are the people to turn your mind, God forbid. I said God forbid. Whatever they have, they are giving you. And they want to withdraw. Let them take all that away. Because God will supply your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Whatever they take away, let them take that away. In fact, if you're a real child of God, if somebody does not believe what you believe, does not accept your faith, and does not accept that you want to get to heaven, and they offer something to you, say, no, I don't want that. You don't want to help something you don't agree with. Because this is the way I'm going. I'm going to heaven. This is what I believe. I believe the Bible. And then if you give me this now, I'm going to use it for what you don't accept and what you don't support. You don't want to do that. I don't want that. All I want, I'll get from Christ. When you take your stand like that and people know that money is not too important to you and food is not too important to you, give me your accommodation and then you're messing you up. That's not important to you. Whatever they offer to that's not important to you. What's important to you is that this is the way walk you therein, and you're going to walk there. And so if they persecute you, say, that's all right, I knew you were persecuted because you don't agree, and I know you are trying to discourage me from getting to heaven, but whether Satan likes it or not, I see somebody there that will get to heaven. Whether your relatives like it or not, I see somebody there that will get to heaven. And then that is why, whatever persecution you say, yes, I will take that. I will endure that, no matter what happens. Look at verse 13. But evil men and seducers, which shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou, but continue thou, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, and knowing of whom thou art has learned it you will continue as we continue what's going to be the result of that continuation i'm coming back to john chapter 8 john chapter 8 and i'm reading from verse 32 as well as verse 36 john chapter 8 we're looking at verse 32 and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free look up here for a moment what if the day you were born again you stopped coming to church because now I'm born again. Everything you have known after you were born again, as you are coming to the services and the Bible studies and revival, you'll not know them as you continue. Then you will know what you didn't know before. And the truth you are hearing every Monday, every Thursday, and every Sunday, and for the leaders every Tuesday, and for the workers every Saturday, the truth you know will set you free. Thank God you'll be free. You'll be freer today after the Bible study than you were yesterday. Because freedom, 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 the Lord and the Lord will project you forward after that freedom. Nothing will hinder you from your progress in Jesus' name. Look at verse 36. Verse 36 says, If the Son therefore shall make you free, nobody else can make you free. Nobody else can make you free. Jesus Christ the Savior, Jesus Christ the Sanctifier, Jesus Christ the Emancipator, Jesus Christ the Liberator. He is the one that can make us free. And he says, If the Son therefore Therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. You'll be free. 
But the question is free from what? Free from what? We're looking at Romans, Romans chapter 6, and I'm reading from verse 18. Romans chapter 6, we're reading from verse 18. It says it'll make us free, but you need to ask yourself, free from what? Look at this, Romans chapter 6, verse 18. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. That's what it means. Sin will hinder us from getting to heaven, and it says it'll make us free from sin sin. Being then be free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Look at verse 22. But now, being made free from, tell me, from sin. Being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. It makes us free. Free. Free from sin. It tells us in Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. I'm reading from verses 1 and 2. Romans chapter 8. We're looking at verses 1 and 2. It says there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Listen to this verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from what? From the law of sin and death. You'll be free. Amen. Totally free. Amen. Completely free. Amen. And sin will not have dominion over your life anymore in Jesus' name. Amen. And we're coming back, we're coming back now to John chapter 8. John chapter 8, and I'm reading from verse 33. John chapter 8, verse 33. This is point number two now. The falsehood and the delusion of the servants of sin. The falsehood and the delusion of the servants of sin. We're coming to John chapter 8, verse 33. Then answered him, will be Abraham's siege. And were never in bondage to any man. How seest thou? Ye shall be made free. These are Jewish people. Abraham's seed. And he said, Were Abraham's seed. And we were never, never, never in bondage to any man. Are you telling us? I'll make you free. Look at verse 34. Jesus answered them. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is a servant of sin. You're not as free as you thought. Because if you are committing sin, you are the servants of sin. Look at verse 35. And the servant abideth not in the house forever. The servant abideth not in the house forever. Look at the latter part of that verse. But the son, capital S, referring to Jesus Christ, abideth ever, abideth ever, abideth ever. Where does the son of God, Jesus Christ, where does he abide ever 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 forever where tell me was he abiding here on earth forever no he's talking about heaven it says the servant will not abide in that place forever but the son capital s will abide there forever he was telling them if you're not free from sin because you are servants of sin. You are going to miss heaven because the servant does not abide in the house forever. Look at uh, verse 33. Verse 33. They answered him will be Abraham's seed. And were never in bondage to any man. What's that? Their bondage in servitude. You see, they, these people, they were in bondage in servitude. They served many nations. They were slaves in many nations. They were in bondage in Egypt. They were in bondage to the Assyrians. They were in bondage to the Babylonians. Even at this time they were talking, they were in bondage to the Roman government. And it was Caesar, not a Jew, a Caesar that was ruling over them. The coin they were spending, the image and the superscription is the image of Caesar. Look at their lies. Look at their delusion. Look at their self-deception. And they said, were never in bondage to any man. Let's check up that statement never in bondage to any man. We're looking at uh, Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15. Look at the Jews, the, the seed of Abraham. In Genesis chapter 15, I, I'm reading from verse 13. From verse 13, look at this. And he said unto Abraham, 
know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a strange in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them for hundred years these were the people that said never 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 were we in bondage to any man these were self-deceivers i pray you'll not be a self-deceiver we're looking at Exodus, Exodus chapter 1, I'm reading from verses 13 and 14. Exodus chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. It says, And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor, and they made their lives bitter with what kind of bondage? Hard bondage. These were people saying, whenever in bondage to any man, of course they were in bondage. Deuteronomy, I'm reading from chapter 26. Deuteronomy chapter 26, we're looking at verse 6. They were telling lies. Jesus knew they were telling lies. That's why he didn't even bother to answer them. In Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 6, it says, And the Egyptians evil entreated us and afflicted us and laid upon us hard bondage look at these liars who are never in bondage to any man and yet they were in bondage i pray you'll not be telling lies against your own soul the Lord that could have delivered them, they didn't allow him to deliver them because they were in bondage. And I told you at this time, they were in bondage to the Roman government, to Caesar. We're looking at Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23, and I'm reading here from verses 1 and 2. Luke chapter 23, verses 1 and 2. It says, and the whole multitude of them rose and led him unto Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, we found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar saying that he himself is Christ a king these were people they knew that Caesar was ruling over them and um, Caesar was a Roman uh, emperor ruling over them they were bonded to the Roman government and yet look at deception they said we were never in bondage to any man liars they needed salvation, but they didn't accept the need salvation. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 7. Acts, chapter 17. We're reading from verse 7. It says, Whom Jason had received, and these all do contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying, There is another king, one Jesus. Everybody knew that they were under the Roman bondage at that time, but look at what Jesus said. We're looking at John, John chapter 8. Sometimes when we go out to witness and uh, we're, you know, talking to people and we're talking to them so God can set them free and so that Christ can set them free. So the salvation of the Lord will come to them. They will say, well, what are you saying? I'm a good man. I'm not a sinner. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't run after women. I'm all right. This is how my heart is. People hurt me. I forgive them. I love them. Tell me, if anybody is going to get to heaven, I must get to heaven. And they are, all, they are telling lies. Don't allow that to put you off when they say they are righteous. How can they be righteous without salvation? How can they be righteous without meeting Jesus the Savior and Jesus the Lord? You will continue talking to them prayerfully and the Lord will open their eyes. And all that deception and all the things covering their side, everything will go away in Jesus' name. You know, you come to people and say, Now, be born again. Give your life to the Lord. They turn it to religion. They said, uh, Which church do you go? You say, Ah, wonderful. I, I, I like your church. Our church is just like your church. If you come to our church and you hear our pastor, he will open the Bible to you. And all of us will rejoice. Salvation? Of course, we have salvation. Born again? We're all born again. And we're all going to heaven. We, we will go to church and not want to get to heaven. I don't want to go to hell. I'm going to heaven. You'll be surprised. You'll see me there. Don't allow all that to put you up, still tell them the word of God, except we turned away from our sins, and there's a definite moment of time when we became born again, and then the Spirit of God bore witness with our heart that we're children of God, and there is a change a change our children will notice, a change our family will notice, a change our office will notice, a transformation of life and character that all our neighbors will notice, except that has happened. We are not truly born again and 
and then you keep on prayerfully until they accept. They will accept. Maybe you were like that before when people, when somebody spoke to you, you were first of all angry like the Jews. And thank God, the day of argument passed over and now you are a believer. I said, now you are a believer. The same thing as you go to them and they argue and they tell lies against themselves. We are Christians, we are born again, we are going to heaven. And don't allow that to tell them pointedly, except a man be born again with a change of heart. If any man be in Christ, it's a new creature. All things are passed away and behold, all things have become new until they now submit and surrender unto the Lord. We're coming to John chapter 8 and I'm looking at verse uh, 34. In verse 34, Jesus answered them. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committed sin is a servant of sin. Verily, verily, I say unto you. What's the next word there? Tell me out loud. Whosoever, do you know something? You know, our title in Christendom doesn't take us to heaven. Whosoever, a bishop. Whosoever a general overseer, whosoever a general superintendent, whosoever the wife of a pastor, whosoever a pastor preacher, whosoever an international evangelist, if he is living in sin, is not born again. It's not born again. No matter the name of the church, no matter the title that he bears, no matter he might go about like the Pharisees, he's going to see, he's going to land, he's going by ear, he's going everywhere, and he's preaching and preaching and preaching, he's spending his money, he's sacrificing, but he's living in sin. He says, I'm a worker, he's living in sin. He says, I'm a leader, he's living in sin. He says, I'm a great uh, personality in our denomination, in our deeper life, but he's living in sin. Look at that. Whosoever, whosoever committed sin is a servant of sin. You know there are some young people they don't understand. It may be somebody in, the, in our church he is uh, trying to uh, fool you and he's trying to lead you into sin. I say, ah, I cannot do that. I cannot. Uh, well, what on? Who are you? What do you know? Well, I've been in this deeper life before you were born. And whatever we do, God knows that everything is right. If it's wrong, will I tell you to do that? It's a sinner. It's trying to pull you into sin. His title does not mean that God will overlook what he's doing. His title, his position in the church does not mean that God is going to overlook anything he has done. Look at the words of Jesus Christ. Whosoever committed sin is a servant of sin. It's in bondage to sin. Uh, look at uh, Acts of the Apostles chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. And I'm reading from verse 23. Acts chapter 8. We're looking at verse 23. It says, For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. This is a man who claimed to be born again. This is a man. Philip had baptized him in water. You know, it doesn't matter they are baptized in water. And then he was following Philip about. He appeared to even have forsaken the work he was doing. He was fully, completely, entirely following after Philip. And then Peter and John came from Jerusalem. They laid hands on people and those sanctified people and they were baptized in the Holy Ghost and he wasn't baptized in the Holy Ghost he said now I'll give you money I'll give you money name the amount, whatever the amount, I give you this money so that you can give me the Holy Ghost so that I too I go on demonstrating. I go on everywhere. I be laying hands on people and Peter told him your money perish with you. I pray that we will be like this old, like this uh, early church uh, apostles in Jesus name. See some people they need money so much. They need money so much. We need money to build the church. We need money to do the and to do this, a businessman comes and is not living right. A businessman comes, is fraudulent. A businessman comes, is occultic. A businessman comes, is still superstitious and is still following through sorcery and witchcraft. And then he says he'll give us this. And whatever he does, you know, those people who say they are preachers, they overlook that. But thank God, Peter will not overlook that. You reject their money. I said you reject their money. The money of blood you reject. 
The money coming from occultism, you reject. The money coming from dubious, sinful business, you reject. The money coming from destroying people's lives and scattering their families, and through that they are getting money, you reject all that. It's not because, you know, because of money, because we need this, we need that. We're not going to take that to heaven. It's good to have a good church building, but the church building is not going to be raptured when we're raptured. Am I right? I said, am I right? If you lose your soul because of church building, you lose your soul because you are trying to get this and get this and get this, then all those things you amass in the world, they'll mean nothing when the rapture takes place. That's the reason why we must take our stand. And the people who are servants of sin, and they bring money, and they bring this, and they bring that, you say, mm, do I need money? All I need is the grace of God, and I have this, that grace of God. All I need is the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every Every word that proceeded forth out of the mouth of God shall man live. And I have that, I have all things. I said I have that, I have all things. Let all that blood money be taken away. In fact, if uh, you know all the sincere people of God and the good children of God, they contribute their little mites and their little pennies and their little fathers and everything adds up. And then you bring somebody that brings blood money. In mixing everything, it will spoil all the money there or destroy all their effects. We don't want their money or want their repentance want their genuine righteousness i want their salvation that's why he's telling us here we want to be totally clean and clear from sinning and supporting anybody in sin that's why peter said let me back up to verse 22 repent therefore of this that wickedness and pray if peradventure perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee for i perceive i perceive i perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bunch of iniquity. Sin is iniquity. And I pray that God will deliver every one of us in Jesus' name. You'll be free if you want to be free. I said you'll be free if you want to be free. No man can tie a rope on your leg as a woman and say, you know, you're continuing. See, if you want to be free, you're going to be free. And no woman can, you know, hold you a hostage and say that only we've done that together. If you run away from me and say, pray for me, I'll report you to the church. Go ahead and report. You, you go to report yourself first and say, well, one woman is coming to report me. Before you say, she says what is going to say, I've been hypocritical. I've been living in sin. I've been living a terrible life and here am I now because you don't care for the position they give you in the church. You don't care for the thing you are holding on to. If uh, they hear the report, if I report myself, they'll take the office of the bishop from me. They'll take the office of overseer from me. What's that? What's that? That one is going to go up in the rapture. What will go up in the rapture is the people that are holy unto the Lord. And therefore you say go and report. Let's go together. I'll even tell you, I'll tell you the person you ought to report to and I'll take you there and then she talks and you talk yes everything she says is true I am a sinner a backslider but I'm repenting now and I'm going my way to heaven that woman will be ashamed then all the rope that tied you together everything is caught let the church say amen Look at this in Second Peter, Second Peter chapter two. I'm reading from verse nineteen. Second Peter chapter two, verse nineteen. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. You see that those preachers, they promise them liberty. They themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome of the same is he brought into bondage. You will not remain in bondage. I said you'll not remain in bondage. Did I hear a good, good amen? I'm looking at John, John chapter 8, John chapter 8, in verse 33, that's their bondage in servitude. In verse 34, that's their bondage to sin. In verse 35, that's the banishment of sinners. Look at that, banishment of sinners. We're looking at uh, John chapter 8, and in verse 35, and the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. That is, the servants of sin. 
will not get to heaven because they have been banished from heaven. Look at the meaning of that word, banished from heaven, in Lamentation chapter 2, verse 14. Lamentation chapter 2, and I'm reading here from verse 14. Lamentation chapter 2, reading from verse 14. Thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee, and they have not discovered thine iniquity to turn away thy captivity. That's bondage, but they have seen for thee false bodies and the causes of banishment. False vision, they encourage them, don't worry, don't worry, you'll be alright. And they're living in sin. Don't worry, it will be alright at the end of the day. And they're living in sin. And it says that those are the things that cause them banishment. That is, eventually, they'll be banished from the kingdom of God. We're looking at uh, Psalm 28, and we're looking at verse 3. Psalm 28, verse 3. The people that remain in sin, they'll be taken away. They will not inherit the kingdom of God. They cannot be in heaven at all. Because it says in Psalm 28 and in verse 3, it tells us in verse 3, draw me not away with the wicked, with the workers of iniquity. Workers of iniquity. They will be drawn away out of the premises of heaven, which speak peace to their neighbors, but mischief is in their hearts. Have you known people like that? The good, great pretenders. And they can talk, they can smile, they can embrace you. They can say, you know, I really appreciate you, you know. And I've been looking at your life. And they have evil in their heart, evil intention in their heart. They really want to destroy you. And they want to take every good thing away from you. But they flatter you, they cajole you, and they deceive you. And because of that uh, deceit, and because of that deception, you fall into them. But it says, draw me away from them. The Lord will draw you away from them. You will not be part of them in Jesus' name. Yeah, look at Psalm 101. I'm reading from verse 8. Psalm 101. Reading from verse 8. In Psalm 101 verse 8, I will early destroy all the wicked out of the land, that I may cut off all wicked doers from the city of the Lord. From the city of the Lord and from the heavenly city, they will be cut off. They cannot be there. There's going to be eternal banishment for them and they will not get to heaven. The New Testament says it very clearly. We're looking at Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. And here we're reading from verse 19. Matthew chapter 7. We're reading from verse 19. Every tree that bringeth forth not forth good fruit is soon that is cut down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruit you shall know them. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord. Not everyone in worship, Lord, Lord. Not everyone that is dancing, Lord, Lord. Not everyone that is beating drugs and saying, Lord, Lord. Not everyone that is, uh, you know, fasting and praying and saying, Lord, Lord. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works. You know, it's surprising today that some so-called deeper life members they are carried away by what they call miracle. They are carried away by what they call prophets. Say, come, come, come. There's a woman in our corner over here. She prophesies. And then she interprets dream. And then she, if you have any problem, she'll take a holy oil, anointed oil. She'll rub your tummy and everything will be over. And then they are going to that side because they don't understand. Although they come to the Bible study, their minds are closed. Their minds are blind and their eyes are blind and they're looking for healing from Satan. They're looking for healing from demons. They're looking for healing from people that do not know God. I, I think, I believe, it's better to die than to stay alive under the occultism of Satan. I can't hear the church. I said it's better to die and go to heaven than stay on earth under the healing virtue of Satan. If you believe that, say amen. Yeah. 
You know, people that they're looking for healing at all costs. And then they go to occultic think, occultic practices, because, uh, you know, this is what we have. We're going to the prayer warriors. Even those prayer warriors, I don't know what they're, what they're looking for. They want to, you know, make a name, and then they're gyrating and turning like this and turning like that, and then speaking some gibberish, some the language that, you know, nobody understands, and there's some barbarism and everything, and then they lay hands on those women, and those women themselves, they're looking for children so desperately and they're looking for healing so desperately and they're looking for deliverance so desperately they don't mind what these uh, so-called prayer warrior people are doing uh, and because they say they work miracles and all that miracles there are many miracles many kinds of miracles miracles come from Rome and miracles come from Babylon and miracles come from uh, Jericho miracles come from everywhere but the people that stand on the word of God and that say, if I'm not sure where that is coming from, I don't want it. Am I talking to church? Yeah. I say, if you don't know where that is coming from, you're going to reject that thing. Yeah. We don't need all these things. If you're a real child of God, ask, it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock, it shall be opened unto you. If you have asked and God is saying, hold on, it's not giving it yet, you are patient. You are not running to those people that are messengers of Satan and that are going to lead you to hellfire. All those things from now we are going to reject in Jesus' name. Look at that. Look at that. Verse 23 now. Then when I profess unto them, I never knew you depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Miracle workers, work of iniquity. And those who are professing, you work iniquity. All those things you will throw away because we want to get to heaven. At least I want to get to heaven. I said I want to get to heaven. And remember you follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. We're looking at Matthew chapter 25 verse 41. Matthew chapter 25 and I'm reading from verse 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand depart from me ye cursed on into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. That's where I will not go. I said that's where I will not go. That's why we are standing with the Lord and you are standing in the freedom that has made you free, free from sin and free from Satan and free from occultism and free from blood money and free, free from all the things of the devil. You remain free in Jesus' name. We come to point number three now, the future and the damnation of the slaves of Satan. We're reading from verse 37. This is John chapter 8 and we're reading from verse 37. It's says in verse 37, I know that she are Abraham's seed, but she seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus says unto them, if ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man that has told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they unto him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If ye were, if, ye, if God were your father, ye would love me, for I proceeded from and came from God. Neither that came I of myself. He said, he, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because she cannot hear my word. Look at verse 44. It is good to talk straight. And it's good to be pointed when you talk. It's good to be direct when you talk. It's good not to be beating about the bush and leaving the real sin. You see, there are some preachers, they are not like Jesus Christ because they are trying to avoid trouble. They, they want to make friends of sinners. They want to make friends of back sliders. They want to make friends of their compromisers. Because of that they cannot tell them the truth. They know the truth is at the center here. They'll be parambulating and going around and going around. And you cannot hold them to say this is what he said. I pray that God will remove such preachers from our midst in Jesus name. 
the preachers who are so afraid of the congregation, afraid of sinners, afraid of backsliders, afraid of compromisers. They cannot tell us the truth. What's the use? What's the use? What are they doing there on, the, on our pulpit? If they cannot tell us the truth of salvation and the truth of sanctification and the truth of holiness without which no man shall see the Lord and they just occupy the pulpit, why don't they somebody to carry them away from there and put somebody there that can tell us the truth and point the way to heaven for us. I pray it will happen like that in Jesus' name. You know, I know some leaders nowadays, sometimes I hear of them, somebody uh, will tell me that, sir, uh, you know, we took this case to uh, Pastor so-and-so, and, -so, and uh, instead of telling us who is right and who is wrong, who ought to repent and who ought to make restitution, sir, this, uh, our pastor was moving like this and moving like this, and at the end, we wasted three hours, and they couldn't strike the point. They are afraid of the people they are talking to. I don't want, I don't want them to know that it's me that said that. Why are you a preacher? Why can't you stand? I stand on the word of God. Look at Jesus now. Look at verse 44. Verse 44. Look at what he said. Uh, if you are there, are you, have you seen that verse? Uh, read it out and let me hear you. Oh, oh that, that's enough. That's enough. They said, we be not born of fornication. God is our father. And they, they said that. Uh, openly and courageously. They said, well, why, why Abraham's seed? I will say you are going to make us free. We are the children of Abraham and God Almighty is our father. Look at verse 44. Ye of your father, the devil. And the laws of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. And he abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of each. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God. God heareth God's word. Look at this. Ye therefore hear them not because, tell me, he told them pointedly, because you are not of God. I pray that same boldness God will give us. That same authority God will give us. And that same assurance as we declare the word of God, the Lord will give every one of our preachers in Jesus' name. Hey, look at these people now, number one. They were captives of deception. They were captives of deception. Their deception had held them in captivity, held them in bondage. And they were totally captivated in that deception. Captives of deception. And what does that mean? I want you to come to uh, this, uh, John chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 37. It says, I know that she are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word has no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father them and ye do that which ye have seen with your father then answered they and said unto him Abraham is a father and Jesus said unto them if ye were Abraham's children ye would ye will do the works of Abraham he goes on to say and now you seek to kill me a man that has said told you the truth which I have heard of God this did not Abraham you do the deeds of your father and they said unto him, we be, we be not born of fornication. We have one father, capital F. And they said, even God. And Jesus said unto them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. They were captured in deception. They were captured, they were captivated in deception. They didn't understand that the physical circumcision does not make you a child of God. That can refer to Abraham. Abraham is our father. That does not make you saved. You have to repent. You have to have a life of righteousness that will show that you're a real child of God. Look at Romans chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 28. Romans chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 28. It says, For he is 
is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. You see, that was their deception. That was their misconception. It says, it's not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. An inward change, an inward transformation, an experience of salvation, an experience of sanctification. He is a Jew, which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit, not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Look at First John chapter 3, verse 12. First John chapter 3. What reading from verse 12? It says in First John chapter 3, reading from verse 12, not as Cain, not as Cain, who was of the wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you, ye know that we have passed from death unto life, because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever, whosoever bishop, whosoever walker, whosoever pastor, whosoever overseer, whosoever member of deeper life, whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. You see all those people, they hated Jesus Christ because of the truth he was revealing to them and he said you want to kill me you want to you want to commit murder and it says because you have that you don't have eternal life abiding in you we come back to john chapter 8 and i'm reading from verse 44 john chapter 8 and i'm reading from verse 44 here he tells us in verse 44 the words of jesus christ direct unto these people you have your father the devil and the laws of your father ye will do he was a murderer from the beginning and about not in the truth because there is no truth in him when he speaketh a lie he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it these were children of the devil children of the devil look at this in john chapter 6 i'm reading from verse 70 john chapter 6 we're looking at uh, verse 70 here it tells us jesus was even talking about one of his followers one of his disciples even an officer a treasurer yeah, among the disciples among those apostles look at what he said in john chapter 6 verse 70 jesus answered them have not i chosen you twelve and uh, tell me the rest tell me out loud i will not be of the devil i said i will not be of the devil and nobody knew because that man he was so quiet and he acted innocent he looked sheepish he looked like he was one of them and yet he was a devil a devil at heart jesus said i've not had chosen you 12 and yet one of you is a devil acts of the apostles chapter 13 i'm reading from verse 10 acts of the apostles chapter 13 we're looking at verse 10 and said oh fool of all subtlety and all mischief thou child of the devil that's Paul the Apostle. That's what I'm saying. You see, these preachers in the Bible, they were forthright and they were direct and they were confrontational even. They were not people that will be, you know, bending here, bending here, and then afraid of a sorceress, afraid of occultic people, afraid of the powers that be. They cannot tell the truth, but no, this man was trying to withstand the word of God and dissuade and they kind of divert the attention of the deputy from hearing the word. And Paul the Apostle spoke directly and said O fool of all subtlety and all mischief thou child of the devil thou thou enemy of all righteousness will thou not cease and stop to pervert the right ways of the Lord I pray God will give us boldness we're not bold to hurt people we're bold to make people sinners know that they're sinners we're bold to help people backsliders know that they're backsliders that they need to get to heaven we're bold to tell them that this is the way walk ye there in, and if they're not walking there we we'll tell them and then after telling we can leave them and go and tell other people the truth of the word of God but we must tell the truth I pray God will help you to tell the truth yeah. emphasize the truth 
I said, emphasize the truth until the people will know that this is the way and this is the truth. And you walk in the truth of God in Jesus. In me. First John, first John chapter 3, first John chapter 3, and we're reading from verse 8. First John chapter 3, reading from verse 8. It says, he that committeth sin is of the devil. You see that again? It's clear, it's pointed, it's direct. Let the people know when we're born again, it sets us free from sin. When we're born again our lives are transformed our lives are changed if our lives have not changed and we're still managing and patching up and living in secret sin but uh, you know don't let them hear and then we we'll cry and cry and cry crocodile tears and then we will still go back into that sin let the people know that salvation sets us free from sin and it says he that committed sin is of the devil for the devil sinned from the beginning for this purpose the son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil this is the day he'll destroy the works of the devil every compromise he'll destroy every weakness he'll destroy and then all the yokes that bind you and tie you to satan or tie you to sin or tie you to backsliding he'll wash everything away in the power of the blood of the lamb he'll make us free and make everyone free in jesus name now the reason why these people who are going to damnation number three here is the cause of their damnation. We're looking at John chapter 8 from verse 45. John chapter 8 and we're looking at uh, verse 45. John chapter 8 verse 45. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Now I need to ask you a question. You came to the Bible study. Now you have heard the truth. And you are not accepting the truth. And you are not praying on the truth and you're not looking at your life and saying this is the truth nobody can argue with this if somebody is living in sin if christ comes he will not go and we don't know when christ will come he might come today he might come tomorrow i need to settle this before he comes if you don't do that why did you come why did you get to the market you're not buying anything why did you get a bucket of water you're not cleaning yourself why are you having the food you're not eating the food why is it you're having the word of god and you're not benefiting from the word of god things will change you will benefit from the word of God in Jesus' name. And this one will turn your life around and change you. Today, you will not be like you were yesterday in Jesus' name. And then it goes on in verse 46. Which of you convinced me of sin? If I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? Then he said, he that is of God heareth God's word. He that is of God heareth God's word. Everybody, he that is of God heareth God's word. God's word. I can't hear you. He that is of God, heareth God's word. You see, if you are really of God, you are saved, you are a child of God, you say, keep on giving it to me. I want more of that. And when the time comes to pray, you will rise up. You take all the points. You take it to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, let this word be as water that will cleanse and wash me. Let this word be as, a, as something that will purge a purgative, that will purge everything negative out of my life. He that is of God heareth God's word. But the one who is not of God will hear the word. At time we say, let us pray. They'll go out. They'll go to the toilet somewhere. They'll be roaming about and all that. They are running for the boss. They are running for this. And then you ask them, what are you doing there? He's doing nothing. His life is aimless. His, has, his life has no purpose. Everybody is praying. We want to get to heaven. He doesn't know his destiny. And he's not hearing the word of God. He's not taking everything inside to the word of God. God. You remember in the business where you're doing, the things that go wrong. In the office, the things that go wrong. In your family, the things that have gone wrong. In your personal life, in your internal life, the things that have gone wrong. And the word of God has revealed everything. And he that is of God, heareth God's word. It's at that time we go to God and we say, God, if the, anything that is called sin must get out of my life. Backsliding must get out of my life. I want to, if I'm not sure of my salvation, I want to get back to the cross again to the foot of Calvary again and get really saved. Those are the people that want to know God. You will know God. But look at the latter part of that verse 47.
one, ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. If we were to look at the heart of everyone, and then God were to look at, uh, you know, search everything with microscope or telescope or whatever, and see the condition of your heart, would you say, okay, you love God, you know God, you hear God, you want to do the work, come to this side, you, you just came. Go to this side. If that will happen in eternity, where will you be? Where will you spend eternity? Now the word of God has come to us again and he has given us the word very clear. The word of God is very clear that Jesus Christ can set us free and Jesus Christ can break every yoke and Jesus Christ can save us from every sin and today whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I said whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. All the yokes of sin will be broken. All the things that are tied up to sin, loving sin, liking sin, and petting sin at the back, and embracing sin, everything will be washed away today. He that will call upon the Lord, freedom is available now. Deliverance is available now. Salvation is available now. A holy life, a clean life is available now. I will call. I said I will call. I can't hear my people. I said I will call. Rise up and tell the Lord and call upon the Lord. Don't let this time pass you by. A time of opportunity. A time of cleansing. A time of real salvation. A time of real restoration. A time to be serious with yourself. And a time to be serious against the devil. And say, devil, enough is enough. I'm coming out of that bondage, out of that yoke. And I'm going to be totally free by the power of the Lord today. I'm going to be totally free by the cleansing of the blood of the Lamb today. I'm going to be totally free from the sacrifice that Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary. Tonight is the night of my freedom. Tonight is the night of my deliverance. Lord, set me free. Lord, set me free. Lord, set me free. And there's no stain of sin that will remain. And there's no shadow of sin that will remain. And there's no bondage of sin that will remain. I will be free so that as I go back in my office, I'll be free. In my home, I'll be free. In the market, I'll be free. All that I anger, all that uh, evil sin in the heart, everything must go today. All that carelessness, everything must go today. All that compromise, everything must go today. I will be free. I'm not depending on title. I'm not depending on your pastor, your worker, your leader, your overseer, your whatever. Today, I want to be free. Lord, set me free. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free.